Hey guys, today we're going to talk about vectors. And you may have seen vectors before in physics, but they're going to be really useful when we start talking about parametric equations in pre-cal. So today our central question is, how do I find the magnitude and direction of a vector quantity? Well first, we need to define what a vector is. So a vector is, so there's two different things we're talking about. We're talking about scalar quantities and vector quantities. And again, you may have seen these definitions in physics at some point. So the first thing is a scalar. A scalar is just a line segment. It only has a magnitude. And all that means is a scalar thing is a number. So an example of that might be a temperature because when I measure temperature, all I care about is one measurement, whatever it is in degrees. Okay, and mass. Mass is also a scalar quantity. So a scalar is a number. Um, now a vector is a directed line segment and all that means is I'm going to tell you um, it's going at this angle or it has a, this type of direction to it. So it has a magnitude which is a length so it has some sort of scalar quantity to it but it also has a direction and in our case for a vector it's going to be the angle made with the positive x-axis. So an example of this would be velocity because when you think about velocity you're telling me how fast you're going and what direction you're going if it's positive or negative. Okay, So let's talk about some parts of a vector now that we know what it is. So a part of a vector, this would be an example of a vector, the little, uh, the black one right here. When you have a vector, you're going to always have your initial point, which is where it starts. And then you're also going to have your terminal point where it ends. So if they say your vector terminates at this point, that means that's where it stops. And I don't know why I put a little, I made that, okay, whatever. So when you talk about a vector, you're going to have two different components. You're going to have two different parts. You're going to have an x component, which is going to be the horizontal component of however far you went over left or right to get there. And then you're also going to have your y component, which is your vertical component. So if I was going to name this vector right here, I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in the x direction. And then I went, I went up 1, 2, 3, 4 in the y direction. And so if I named this vector, I would use these little pointy brackets, and I would put my x first, and then I would put my y. Okay, now the one thing to note here is that components could be negative. If you had a vector that was going down, so if you had one that looked like this, this could be a negative y component. If your vector was going towards the left instead of towards the right, that would be a negative x component. The other way that we're going to write this is the xi plus yj form. This i and this j, those are just built into the equation. This is saying that this is my horizontal component and this is my vertical component. So again, I could have written this using my little pointy brackets or I could have written it as 8i plus 4j. So both of these would be an example of how you could write a vector. Um, there are a couple special vectors that we need to know, and the first one is a unit vector, and that's just a vector with magnitude of 1. We talked about the unit circle, where that was a circle that had a radius of 1, so a unit vector is going to be a vector with a magnitude of 1. Now a zero vector is just a vector, I mean it's zero, it has no direction and it also has a magnitude of zero and that's going to be useful when we perform operations in a little bit. Okay, so again that's kind of the example of how you would name a vector. You just go ahead and you name the x component and then the y component. Now they're also going to ask you to do something called a position vector and all the position vector means is that it has an initial point at the origin. So if I was thinking about this vector in particular, I want to move it so it has that point at the origin. So it says find the position vector of a vector starting at negative 2, 5 and terminating at 3, 7. So if I went ahead and drew myself a little picture of this, this is not going to be to scale. So I have, um, I'm going to start at negative 2 and then 5. I'm going to make these 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so you're going to start at 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then I'm going to terminate at 3, 7. And I believe this was 7. So this is what my vector would look like. 
Now all I'm going to do is go move it so it starts down at the origin instead. So basically what you're looking for here is you want to find those horizontal and vertical components so it's really easy to write, oh, this is what it would look like if it had started at the origin. So in order for you to do that, you're just going to take your x's and you're going to find three and I want to figure out how far it took me to get from here to here so I could have counted that on my plane or I could take minus negative two to figure out how far it was. And so all I have to do is subtract these. Well, I'll technically add them, right? And so this would be that there were five units in between here and you could have counted that one, two, three, four, five. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the Y values. And so my Y values went from seven to five. So I'm gonna say seven minus five. Um, and then that's just gonna be two. So my resulting vector then, I'm gonna write it with my pointy brackets or with my I and my J, depending on which way you wanna do it. My horizontal component was five, my vertical component was two, so this would be my answer. Or again, I could have written it with my I's and my J's. So all I've done here is I've literally shifted my um, vector down to the origin. So it's like over here now to tell me exactly where, how far it was. It's kind of like finding slope in order to find a position vector, okay? The next thing that we're gonna talk about is something called magnitude. And magnitude is just the length of the vector. So we talked about what a vector is and now we're gonna say what a magnitude is. And so if for instance, I wanted to find the length of this vector here, if I went ahead, so if I figure out the horizontal component here, it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then my vertical component is three. If you notice, this makes that little right triangle. And then I can just use the Pythagorean theorem in order to figure out what this hypotenuse side is. And so that one's pretty straightforward. We just do three squared plus seven squared, and that would equal to C squared. So I'd get nine plus 49 equals C squared. And so then I just take the square root of that resulting, so 58, and that would be my answer, oh, not squared anymore, and that would be my answer. And so if you notice, that's what this formula looks like. It's just the Pythagorean theorem. Your A is gonna be your horizontal component, and your um, B is gonna be your vertical component. So if I looked at something that was actually like a regular vector not drawn out for me, I could draw it if I felt like it, but all you gotta do here is A is gonna be two, B, be careful here, is negative three, which won't make a difference in the end, but then I plug it into this formula. So the magnitude, these two bars that look like a double absolute value that's just saying the magnitude is going to be equivalent to the square root of two squared plus negative three squared. And then I just simplify this down. So I'd have four plus nine, which is 13. And so my answer would be the square root of 13. Whoops. Okay, and so what they might make you do is do some operations on vectors as well. And so I'm gonna show you this two different ways. I'm gonna show you with a geometric, so it kind of makes more sense visually, and then I'm also gonna show you algebraically. So the first one geometrically, what they want us to do is they want us to find two V plus three U. So if I wanna find two V plus three or U, this is how you do it algebraically. Um, so I have two V vectors, so I'm gonna take one of my V vectors, and then I'm going to put another V vector. Now you always have to put your vectors with your initial point, your terminal point, and then your initial point. So the next one is always gonna start after the other one ends. So I have two Vs, and then I'm gonna put three Us on this last thing right here. And then this is what it looks like once I have my three Us. So my answer vector is actually going to be this right here. How did I get from the starting point to this ending point? So this would be my resulting vector. And so this would be 2v plus 3u down here. So that's geometrically. If I wanted to do this algebraically, all we'd have to do is figure out what those points would be. And so uh, all I have to do is I'm going to take two times my v vector, so 2v. And when I have that, all I've got to do is, this is a scalar quantity, so I'm just going to multiply everything inside my v vector by 2. So I'd have two times two is four, negative one times two is negative two, so that's two V. And then three U, gonna do it the same way. I'm gonna have 12, and then two times three is gonna be six. I can actually do that. 
And now when I add them together, I'm just going to add up the parts. And I should probably make sure I'm writing the right thing. So I'm going to add up my horizontal components, and then I'm going to add up my vertical components. So I'm going to add 4 plus 12. That's going to get me 16. And then I'm going to add negative 2 plus 4. That gets me 4. So that resulting vector is going to be 16, 4. And that's kind of what that looks like over there if we counted everything up and we'd simplify a little bit. Okay. Now if you do V minus U, this gets a little bit more tricky because what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my V vector and then what I've got to do here is I've got to go ahead and I'm going to change the direction on this guy. So when I put them together, this is what it would look like if I was adding my two vectors. But because I need to take this and I'm going to flip it, well, that was the wrong direction that I flipped it. Fail. My fit did it the same way. I'm just going to do it by hand. And so I'm going to change the direction. Oh my goodness, what's going on? I'm going to change the direction, but not change the magnitude. So it's going to be going the same thing. Otherwise, it's just I flip it over. And so now when I look at my resulting vector, this would be my answer to V minus U. Okay, and same deal if I do this algebraically. If I did V minus U, I'm just going to take my components and uh, separate them algebraically. So I'd have 2, negative 1, minus 4, 2, except for I needed to switch those. I don't know what's going on this morning. Okay, and then all I've got to do here and I put a negative in there that didn't need to be there. It's just add each component separately and I'm actually subtracting them here. So I'd have the answer two, because four minus two is two, and then two minus a negative one is gonna get me three. And that's kind of what this looks like over here. I went over two and up three. All right, so that's kind of how we do vector operations. Again, if you have a number on the outside, you just kind of distribute it inside to your components. And then when you're adding two separate vectors together, you're just going to add the horizontal components and then the vertical components. The last thing we need to talk about is how can you find the horizontal and vertical components if all you're given is a magnitude? So if you're told what the length is, how can you figure out what A and B are? And this is actually um, gonna be a review of something we've seen before. So if for instance I had this vector and I wanted to figure out how I could name this vector in the plane. So I have something that looks like this we're going to call my horizontal component A and my vertical component B. And usually they're going to tell you this right here, this theta, this thing. And if you look right here, this should be kind of familiar. If I wanted to find, for instance, A, A, well, let me not do that. I'm going to say, well, I know my hypotenuse and my adjacent to my angle. So if I know hypotenuse and adjacent, I'm going to use cosine. So the cosine of theta would give me my adjacent over my hypotenuse. And if I rearrange this to solve for A, I would just multiply my magnitude times the cosine of theta. Okay, and if we did this for B, it would look very similar. And we'd have sine though instead, because we'd have the opposite from the angle. So here are your formulas, slowly. So in order to find the A component, you find the magnitude times the cosine of whatever angle, and to find your B component, your vertical component, you just do the sine, okay? And that makes sense as what we did before in order to find y, you had y was with the sine and x was with the cosine. So if you know that a vector has a magnitude of eight and a direction of pi over three, so they give you an angle, find the horizontal and vertical components in I plus J form. So all I gotta do here is plug in into these formulas. So I know that A is going to be my magnitude times the cosine of theta. So my magnitude they gave me was eight, and then the cosine of pi over three. If you still have your um, unit circle memorized, you're in luck. If you don't have your unit circle memorized, no big deal. We know pi over three is equivalent to about 60 degrees. And when I say about, I mean exactly 60. And so opposite the 60 is gonna be root three. My other side would be one, and then my hypotenuse is two. So that means that the cosine is going to be my adjacent over hypotenuse, which would get me 8 times 1 half. 
So I know that my horizontal component is four. Okay, and now I've gotta go ahead and find my vertical component. So absolute, not absolute value, the magnitude get a little bit confused, there's too many lines going on there. So I'd have eight times the sine of theta, which was pi over three. And again, I can use this same triangle, it's just now I'm gonna take my opposite over my hypotenuse. So I'd have root three over two, which simplifies down to four root three. Okay, and so now I can write this as an ij, i plus j form. My horizontal component is, or four, and my other component, my vertical component, is four root three. So this would be your final answer. And this makes sense. If you had gone ahead and drawn this, you would have seen that this was gonna be that 30, 60, 90. It's just now, now that has a magnitude of eight instead of two. The last application you might see of this is to find the actual magnitude and direction of a given vector. So before we found the vector, now they gave us the vector, and they want me to tell them what is the magnitude, so how long is the vector, and then what the direction is. So the easiest thing for you to do here is to actually draw this thing, because I know that my x component is equal to negative root three, and I know that my y component is equal to one, because there's nothing in front there. So if I drew this on my coordinate plane, I would know that I need to go into the negative x direction, root three, and then I need to go up one, and this is not drawn to scale at all. And if you notice here, this is actually a triangle that we've talked about plenty in trig. If we have a side of one and root three, and I did the Pythagorean theorem here, I'd find out this side was two, which makes this into a 30, 60, 90 triangle. Opposite of this angle is gonna be the one, and so that means that that's the 30 degree angle. Now the only problem here is when I'm looking for the direction, I have to find this angle because they want it with the positive x-axis. And so this is just like when we were finding reference angles, you have to go ahead and you're gonna take 180 minus 30, or pi minus pi over six, depending on if they're in radians, but then I know that my direction is 150 degrees. Okay, and we're probably gonna be in degrees more than radians in here. So when I look now, now the other thing I need to do is find the magnitude. Well, I already found that. I found out what this length is right here. And again, you can use the Pythagorean theorem if you needed to, if it wasn't nice, where I had one of my sides plus my other side squared, and that's gonna get you to your other thing, which I guess we're calling this u. Yes, we are calling this u. And so again, I would have gotten two as my magnitude. And that's all I've got. Hopefully that was a pretty good review for you. Um, and I will see you tomorrow.